Okay, so two and a half tribes, we've been told they're cities in chapter 13. We've got a title deed of the land of Israel, no matter who or what, ever, written in the Holy Bible that they despise. In chapter 14, before we get to the 12 tribes, we're going to look at one individual and check him out before we get to the, tw the other tribes. And chapter 14, and these are the countries, chapter 13, which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of their fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed that's the first time that shows up, for an inheritance to them. So what we think of today and distribute in, in verse 32 of chapter 13, you think of distribute, you, thought, you think of grocery stores, you think of, of, of products, you think of goods, and the Bible thinks about the nation of Israel and their land. First time a word shows up in the Bible, it sets the tone. By lot was the inheritance as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. Two and a half are on the other side. For Moses had given inheritance to the two tribes and a half tribe on the other side. See again, Moses did it, not God. Verse 2, the lot that was inheritance as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and the half tribe. That's God. Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe Manasseh, for Moses had given inheritance to the two tribes and the half-tribe on the other side of Jordan. And they'll be the first to go into captivity, I've told you. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. Now remember chapter 13? Well, here's the tribe, here's Levi. Here's the tribes, here's Levi. They get no possession. Jerusalem and cities inside their brethren are their possession. I think 48 cities, if I'm correct. But the first of the land they get from, the, from their brethren. They get the best meat. They get the best uh, produce. They get the first of the first. But they don't get land. So how do we still get 12? Amazing. you got to go all the way to Joshua. For the children of Joseph were two tribes. Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land of save cities they didn't get the land they got cities to dwell in with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance now genesis 48 i think it is genesis 48 uh verse 13. we're going to see the blessing of your children at least the children of abraham isaac and jacob has merit and ground in chapter 48 of genesis verse 13 and joseph took them both ephraim in his right hand toward israel's left hand and manasseh his left hand toward israel's right hand and brought them near unto him and israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon ephraim's head who was the younger wrong one both in manasseh and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittily, which he knew what he was doing. Though he's half blind, he knows. For Manasseh, his firstborn. So Manasseh should have had the right hand, the, the, the blessing of the firstborn, but look at Israel, Jacob. Uh, look at him reaping from Esau and him. But that's not our, we've already did that topic. So he blessed Joseph and said, God, be whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. The angel, notice that capital A. The angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Uh, and Joseph saw his father had his right hand on the head of Ephraim. If it pleased him, he, he held up his father's hand, you know, switches. Got the wrong child there. Uh, 
Uh, verse 19, his father refused and said, I know my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. His seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day saying, in thee shall Israel bless saying, God make thee as Ephraim and Manasseh. And he sent Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said to Joseph, behold, I die. But God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. And here we are in Joshua. Moreover, I have given to thee one port and then we'll see this land. But here, he blesses Ephraim and Manasseh before the 12 tribes are together. And he says, let their names be upon me. So here we go. We drop Levi as the priest class in chapter 14. We give him a special being. But in order to have 12, we split Joseph into two by his sons. And we still have that 12. Now, Joseph, we know that Reuben slept with his father. And, and Reuben said, listen, you're unstable as water. I'm removing that blessing off you. And it, and, Ru, uh, and Simeon and Levi, they were instruments of cruelty. They destroyed a whole city over the diner, their, their sister. And it goes to Judah. Uh, can't speak right today. It goes to Judah. Verse 22 is, I think, the key, though, to that, where he takes the place of Levi, because it says, one portion above thy brother. Yeah. So we look at Judah as the next one from Jesus Christ, but the real next firstborn of Israel is Joseph, his wife, who he worked for for seven years, and then another seven years, Rachel. And the blessing that goes upon Joseph being Judah is a line of Jesus Christ. Both your sons are the blessings are accounted in my name, he says, of the children of Israel. Now you remember Joseph's children, they were Jewish and half Egyptian, for he had the priest of On's daughter. And God says, I will call out one tribe, Levi, to be my priest class. Well, I still need 12. And I don't know if Joseph, I don't know if Jacob knew what he was doing when he blessed those two boys of Joseph by themselves, but this is where we are. It says in verse 4, for the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. That's the two that Jacob, he didn't bless any of his, grand, his other grandchildren, but Ephraim and Joseph and Manasseh. Therefore, they gave no part unto Levi in the land save cities levites will get cities to dwell in and their suburbs for, for cattle and for their substance so they'll get part of the land they just don't have a setting for levite as the lord commanded moses so the children of israel did and they divided the land and we're going to see the divisions next chapters then the children of judah came unto joshua judah that's the line of jesus christ judah then the children of Judah came. Now here's a particular tribe. Came unto Joshua and Gilgal and Caleb. There's the subject of this chapter, Caleb. Remember Caleb? We'll look at Caleb. Caleb is a very, Numbers 32, 12. Let's look at Caleb. Numbers 32, 12. Caleb's going to give us a lot of reasoning, answers. Caleb 32, verse 12, in Numbers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. Now remember Moses sent into Kadesh Barnea, sent 12 spies, each of the tribe of Israel. And those 12 spies came back, and they came back with all these grapes and pomegranates and great fruit and land. Ten of them said, we can't do it. The giants are too big. The walls are walled up to heaven. We can't do it. Let's make a captain. Let's go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb fall on their knees and fall on before the Lord and say, we can do it. Let's go there now. Come on. Shut these guys up. Let's go. Caleb's ready to go. Joshua's ready to go. And because of the sins of those ten spies 
They will wander 40 days. They walked around in the promised land. They went into the promised land 40 days. And God says, for every day, I'm going to give you a year. And because you disobeyed God, 40 years you're going to wind up in this wilderness until you drop dead. 40 years are over. Here is Joshua. Here is Caleb. And they are alive and well of all the spies. Those spies even died out before the other Israelites died out. So Caleb, the son of Jephon, in verse 6, the Kenzanite, said unto them, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, not even Joshua, concerning me and thee, you and me, Joshua, remember, in Kadesh Barnelia. So here, you know, we're all military pals. Let's look at Numbers 13.30. Numbers 13.30. Numbers 13.30. And we'll, we'll go in verse 26. I think we got the time. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregations show them the fruit of the land. You imagine they're carrying a, 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 a cluster of grapes, two people. Imagine they put that on the scale at the checkout center. And they told him, say, we came unto the land where thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. That's great. These 12 men are the only men who have gone into the promised land ever. Not Moses, not Joshua, not Aaron, nobody but these 12 men. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, their giants. You know what Caleb means? dog Joshua means Jehovah saves you know dogs are in the law they're unclean why his mother name or his father named them dog we don't know but, but Anak is there the Anakins dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains God told you that already and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan they already know that God didn't tell him about the giants, though, but. Verse 30. Here's our gentleman. Ready? And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, and we are well able to uncover. But the men that went with him said, We be not able. Look at John, Look at Caleb. We can do it. Let's go. You guys shut up. Yeah, I'm going to turn around and punch you in the face. Let's go. Shut up. But they overspoke the people. And they hindered the people from going in, and they ended up 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years later, a little more, we'll see. Here's Caleb. Walks up to the judge. Joshua, you remember back then what we just read? Remember you and I wanted to go in there and take on those giants right away, you and me? But the people listened to them more. And we had to walk 40 years because of them idiots. I added idiots. Numbers 14.10. Numbers chapter 14.10. Caleb's a remarkable character in the Bible. Numbers 14 verse 10. Here's the attitude of Israel. Verse 9. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense, that's the first time that shows up, is departed from them. Their gods are gone. Jericho? There was no defense in Jericho. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade to stone them with stones. 
when the glory of the Lord appeared in the tablet, you know, that's the, that's Israel's attitude at Kadesh Barnea. We're going to stone you and we're not going in. So let's look at verse 7 of Joshua 14. 7 plus 7 is 14. That is another 7. 7, 7, 7. seven. This is Caleb speaking. 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Canish Barnelia to espy the land. He was 40 years old. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. He wanted to go conquer, remember? Let's go. We can do it. Nevertheless, that's the same wording that was back there in Numbers. Nevertheless, my brethren, the other ten that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. That's exactly what Numbers said. But I wholly, Numbers 14, 24, follow the Lord my God. The Holy Spirit has recorded that for us in two places about Caleb and Joshua. Verse 9. And Moses swore on that day. There's a lot going on that day. There are ten men that are, are driven Israel into rebelling against God. There are two men, Moses and Aaron, they're falling on their face praying to God. With that day complete utter this chaos. Moses swore unto me on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trotted shall be thy inheritance. For Caleb's faith in God, that he can go get giant butt and kick it. Moses said, you get that land that you walked on. How's that? And thy children's forever. There is a piece of land, we'll read about in Hebron, that God through Moses said, that is your land, you can have it. And it's not only for you, Caleb, it's for your children. And if there's anybody in the world that can say, this is my land, it is Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. It is the nation of Israel to say that that's the land that God's given us. And the book of Joshua is going to tell us the cities. So, verse 9, Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord, my God. Look at, look at Caleb. That's my God. My God spoke to Moses saying, that is my land. And now we're here, Joshua. I want to claim my land. Let's read on. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Look at that. He's giving God the credit for his living. He's walked around 40 years because of these guys. As he said, these 40 and 5 years. That's interesting. Get that. How many years they walk in the wilderness? 40 years. He says 45. Even since the Lord spanked this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now... Forty years in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. I am 85 years old. He walked 40 years in the wilderness at 40, and he was 80 years old at the end of that 40 years. Now there's five years. What's that five years? Well, let's go back to chapter 11, verse 18. And it will give us a date of Joshua. That 40th year Joshua went in the land when Moses died. Uh, chapter 11 verse 18, Joshua made war a long time. How long? Eight years. Or was it five years? Excuse me, five years. We date that, that verse, chapter chapter 11 verse 18, by what Josh, what Caleb says. We walked 40 years. I was 40 years old then. I am now 80 at the end of the 40 years and add five years to it. That's how long it took Joshua to get to chapter 14. Five years. 
You know what five is? Five is the number of death in the Bible. And who died? All the people that were in the land. Though there were some disobedience. You got to study and read your Bible to see that. Those are great little nuggets when you get them in the Bible. And those little nuggets come with sweet sauce with no sour. Verse 11. Now watch this. Now this is not God. This guy is 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was the day that Moses sent me. 45 years old, later, this guy is as strong as when he was 40 years old. Even so is my strength now for war. This guy is a warrior. Both to go out and to come in. This is a miracle in the Bible. An 85-year-old guy has a strength as when he was 40 years old. And God did it so he can go get his land. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. <laughs> you know how hard it is to climb a mountain when you're 40 years old? How about when you're 80? Man, Caleb walks right after Joshua. I got the sure mercies of God. I got the blessings of Moses. God is honoring me. I have got the strength I've got many, 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 many years ago. And I want that mountain. And we've already read in the Bible, in the mountain are the giants. And you know what Caleb said? I'm going that mountain. I'm going to kick some giant butt, and that's my land. Anybody in that land that God's given me through Moses, you're gone. You're dead. Goodbye. I'm ready. Let's go. Joshua, what about those other guys that went with us? They're dead. That's you and I go. Joshua's already done his part. Joshua's already kicking butt, and then he's got an angry old man here that's elderly, ready to go. Boom. If all Israel were like that, if all Christians were like that. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore, the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakins, that's the giants, were there. He knows his giants. And he's like, give me that mountain. And I am doing it with their butt. How else is he going? Is he, you think that the, the giants are going to, oh, come on in, Caleb, take it over? Uh-uh. Can you just see this old guy sitting here, he, and he's got his cane and his sword. I'm ready to go, Joshua. Let me go. He probably got his children around. Come on, Grandpa. No, let's go. The enemy kids were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. Everything that the spies said it was. They took it as a threat. Joshua and, and Caleb were taking it. It's a challenge. Let's go. Now remember, Caleb has seen what happened to Jericho. Caleb has seen what happened to Ai. Caleb has seen what happened to Gideon. Caleb has seen all these nations. He's seen them conquered. He's seen these people come and they are in fear. Huh? I'm talking about we, we've seen since those spies have died. And that's only, can you imagine Caleb when he seen Jericho go down? Oh, I got that mountain. It's mine. Oh, he's going to kick some butt. AI. I guarantee Caleb would have been mad at, uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, Aiken. Man, what are you doing, Aiken? Didn't we already go through this mess? Okay, the battle's over. We've already signed the places. We haven't got to the tribes yet, passing laws, and, and he steps right up to Joshua. Can you imagine Joshua's just standing? Oh, here comes my buddy. They've been military friends. They've been together. And, and Caleb comes up to Josh. Hey, Joshua, how you doing? Remember what happened back then? Remember Moses told me? And Joshua's looking at a military man and said, Man, if I give you that land, those giants and those people in that land, they're done for. They're dead. So what's Joshua do? If it so be the Lord will be with me, that I shall be able to drive them out. <laughs> As the Lord said, I'm going to drive them out. If God is with me, if only God is with me, I'll get the victory. It is not nothing about his age. It is nothing about his size. It is nothing about what he can do. <coughs> He's trusting the Lord with all his might. And Joshua blessed him. 
and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. And Hebron is 18 miles southwest of Jerusalem. Hebron, Genesis 13, 18, Genesis 23, 2, and 35, 27, it is the home of Abram, it's the home of Isaac, and it was the home of Jacob. Isn't that interesting? Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite. Unto this day, because he has wholly followed the Lord three times, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, he has wholly followed the Lord God of, of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kirj of Arba, which Arba was a great man, not before Caleb and God, among the, the Anakims, which are giants. And then the land had rest for more. <laughs> Caleb gets in there and causes peace by killing these giants. Now we're going to get to the tribes of Israel. Caleb's happy. He's got his land. 